Hello everyone and welcome back to More Knowing Wheel, episode 51, where today we're here back ready to preview the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix from the Imola circuit. Of course, as always, I'm joined by Jamie183. How, how are we doing, mate? I'm doing well, yeah. I'm sure you're doing better than me since uh, you've got plans this weekend coming up. Yes, but, I yeah. do. <laughs> we'll get onto that a bit later, I'm sure, but how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm not. It's it's weird that you're asking me how I'm doing for once. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not too bad, mate. Like I said, got big plans this weekend. Really, really looking forward to that. But even more looking forward to getting into the podcast. You're being joined by you uh, oh, yeah. once it's again. A joy. <laughs> it it certainly certainly is. But episode fifty one of the podcast. I remember last year when we did our Emilia Romagna Grand Prix preview. Jamie, do you remember that podcast? No, I I don't think so. No, did you do? didn't use the right microphone. Oh, amazing. <laughs> it was the, I think it was like the third podcast we did. And yeah, you forgot to use the well, right microphone. So you're as long as my mic's horrendous. correct today, we're already on a better foot than last year. <laughs> exactly. I'd, I'd like to think in 12 months we've made a bit of progress uh, on this podcast. But as always, though, we'll quickly get into a couple of bits before we get into it. As always... If you aren't already and you haven't checked out the F1 merch store down below, there will be links to that. You know, if you want to get Formula 1 merch, maybe you're heading to Imola this weekend and you need some Ferrari, you know, some Charles Leclerc merch so you don't get murdered by the Tafosi. Check out the F1 merch store. There'll be links down below. And obviously, if you click using those links, you massively help support the channel and the podcast as well as check out Bybit. I've now actually got a... You won't be able to see this if you're watching this on Spotify, but I've now actually got a chair, Jamie, with Bybit written on it. Ridiculous. So, obviously, there'll now be sort of information on the screen, but if you're interested in getting $10 free dollars worth of crypto, if you deposit $10 with them using my links down below, uh, yeah, that would be massively, massively appreciated as plus. well. You've got to be 18 as well, yeah, Jamie, remembering that one for me. But, Jamie, back at Imola this weekend, if we'd said this, what, two years ago now, it would have been absolutely insane. It's kind of weird, isn't it, that Imola's yeah. kind of shoehorned his way back in permanently. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised, really. I guess the fan base in Italy, especially now, will be very good since Ferrari are back. But even before that, it's it kind of fell onto the calendar by chance. And obviously, it would have cancelled races in 2020. And it wasn't particularly good, the very first one, at least. And it somehow ended up, like, carrying on. So there we go. I'm, I mean, I like the track. It's, I think it's, it's not massively suited to modern F1, really. No, um, no. It's a bit too small and... Uh, yeah it's quite hard to overtake obviously um but yeah it's it's got good history obviously so yeah i'm sure it'll be an exciting race and it looks like it might be raining again like it did last year yes i don't know if you've seen that i certainly going. have <laughs> take your raincoat and your umbrella just to i be sure. i will definitely be taking a raincoat and an umbrella yeah i think what everyone kind of forgets about imola isn't it is it actually probably makes more sense geographically than monza to be fair because ferrari are just down the road from imola Mm. Alpha Tauri are just down the road. Oh, excuse me, from Imola as well. It actually is a lot closer to a lot of the motorsport in Italy now. I don't think either of us are. I, I, I don't have a um, a PhD in Italian <laughs> geography. I don't know if you do. No, I don't. I've been to Monza though, so I guess that, you have been to Monza. Yeah, yeah. that's so something. We're, <laughs> we're going to have ticked off both Italian Grand Prix circuits. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't go for a race. I went for when the race should have been, but it wasn't. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not not quite for Jamie. But no. yeah, like like he's already confirmed though, I am heading to Imola this weekend. I'm really, really excited for it. You know, let me know uh, down in the comments below as well, obviously, if you're heading to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. You know, if you, if you are going and you see me there, please do say hello. I won't bite. I might get a little bit scared, but I will try and say hello as well. Uh, you know, if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, but... Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. You know, there's a lot of history around Imola as well. You know, I want to go see sort of the Senna Memorial, uh, the Roland Ratzenberger Memorial as well, of course. You know, it's it's a track with a lot of past, isn't it, Jamie? Yeah, definitely. And it's not actually changed that much, other than a few extra chicanes, from how it was then, which is quite cool. Yes, so, yeah. In, yeah. When it came right back to, to Formula 1. Well. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I don't know if you've ever seen footage of the proper old circuit, though. That was kind of wild because it did literally go through like the, the sort of this small town of Imola, right. <laughs> sort of around the circuit as well. But yeah, it was a wild circuit because it was just incredibly high speed 
and stupidly obviously stupidly dangerous. Stupidly dangerous, and they had the proper old school curbs as well everywhere, where they were like oh, nice. the size of normal Just like curbs you see on the side of the road. You find in like Manchester somewhere. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Formula One has come a long, long way uh, since then. But like you said, though, the last well, last year's Grand Prix was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Twenty twenties wasn't so much but it did see daniel ricardo pick up a podium yeah his second podium for renault and last podium for renault yeah yeah i was gonna say his last podium but no he won a race didn't he yeah so yeah it, it's a it's an okay track i'm sure if it's raining as well that'll obviously throw a spanner in the works yes I think yeah in a normal race scenario it's not the best circuit for overtaking or for good racing but the drivers love it i love how like traditional type circuits where you make a mistake and you're in the grass or in the gravel that's yes. always a bonus so yeah. that's good now you said about how obviously Imola is not a particularly good track for racing i'm not so convinced this year i mean most of the moves of course will come on the run towards turn one but yeah. I, I mean the last couple of years we sort of saw cars being able to get close towards turn one weren't we and then they were losing yeah. a lot of ground around the track I wonder if this year, whether we're going to be able to see him stick a lot closer through the Ravatsas and then yeah. be able to get a good run out of the final corner with the DRS. Hopefully so. Um, I think they almost got DRS bang on last year in terms of length down towards turn one because yes, yeah. you kind of had to actually make the move in the braking zone. I much prefer that than just being well ahead. Before the Sailing zone past, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully if the dirty air isn't too bad, then they can follow through the final two corners, which are quite mid-speed, and then, yeah, get it down to turn one, get side by side. Bit of good racing. Verstappen could force Hamilton off the track again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just trying to stick that knife in there. Bring slightly. that one back again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have not forgot. Verstappen can't race wheel to wheel with anyone. It's it's well known. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean... Uh, the buy bit sponsorship said otherwise. Yeah, yeah, they might do. They might do. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, looking though towards the weekend though, Jamie, first sprint race back as well. Yeah, which I we, we said at the time it got announced. It's a bit of a weird choice to me um, because, as we said, there's no guarantee it will be brilliant for racing. Uh, I don't really know why they pick whatever tracks they do pick. Obviously, like Brazil was quite an obvious one for the overtakes. Yes, so also yeah. last year was quite an obvious one as well because it's like what is the first big event in terms of fans and stuff. So that made sense. But, yes, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I, I mean, I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, but, um, yeah, I, th- I mean, yeah. it should be good fun anyway. I think this is the problem still, isn't it, with the sprint races? Obviously, they've retweaked the point system this year, but it still doesn't justify making a risky move in the sprint. Because no, obviously like one point between each thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't really make sense to take a big risk there. And then obviously, if it goes wrong, you just completely ruin the entirety yeah. of your weekend still. But like we said, you know, if cars can stick a bit closer out of the final corner, you know, we could see something interesting from it. You know, it was like a really, obviously, the two good examples from sprint races last year was, of course, Hamilton, who was just yeah. on fire throughout the entire Brazilian Grand Prix weekend. And then I think the one that's kind of forgotten about to a certain degree was obviously Alonso at Silverstone yeah, using yeah. those soft tyres. Getting on, what, six places before? It was, like, yeah, one. four or five, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Craziness. And then just holding on to it, or trying to hold on to it for the rest of the race. Yeah, yeah. So if we see something like that, then yeah. And especially if it's raining, that would be really cool because obviously or, you know, it's a huge variation. Yeah, even if we get... A changeable conditions qualifying session that sets us up for a mixed up sprint grid. Yeah. That's what we kind of need, isn't it? You, the sprint races only really work if things are a little bit all over the place anyway. Don't yeah, because when all the cars just qualify in the right order, there's no reason for them to overtake each other because no one's quick enough to overtake the car in front of them. So you kind of want a mixed up qualifying or you want a changeable conditions race where teams are going to be faster than they were or slower than they were in qualifying yes yeah but yeah hopefully one of those two things happens otherwise it'll be a bit processional but we'll have to wait and see exactly exactly there's always a lot of questions uh when we get back into it of course the other big discussion over the last few weeks though jamie has been you know whether we're going to see mercedes bring an upgrade package or red bull bring an upgrade or a reliability package uh in <laughs> red bull's case you know red bull aren't quite as reliable as their sponsor by bit i'm just going to sneak that one in there um oh, hashtag ad <laughs> Um, but there hasn't really been much discussion this week, has there? About there's been no sort of big announcement no. from any team bringing and a it big is, package. It's the first European race, so it's traditionally this is where you bring like the B spec almost, or the first big upgrade at least. 
Yeah. So yeah. it's interesting that no one no one seems to be either showing their cards or no one seems to bring up any upgrades, which yeah, especially for teams like Mercedes and teams arguably McLaren, like teams that should be doing better than they are based on the previous season. They don't seem to be wanting to make that that much headway in terms of upgrades. Yeah. So potentially yeah. it might just be they've not announced them yet because it's only Monday as we record this. So, but yeah, yeah, I'm you, sure by the think... time this podcast has gone out, oh, the yeah. four teams will announce something that Red Bull have worked out where their <laughs> yeah. car can fly because Ad- <laughs> Adrian knew he's just a wizard. Yeah, um, turn the wings upside down. <laughs> But, I mean, obviously, we wonder, like you said, Mercedes, I think, is the big one, isn't it, that we're kind of focusing on yeah. about these upgrades. Obviously, they ran a huge amount of sensors, didn't they, at Australia? It was something mad, like 1.6 kilos worth wow. of sensors. So I wonder if they're just kind of holding back this weekend, still trying to process all the data they learnt from Albert Park to sort of get it sorted properly, whether, you know, that's sort of Spain or Monaco or something like that over the next few race weekends but we'll have to wait and see won't we yeah yeah i think i was chatting to a friend today actually like i think mercedes will be running races by the end of the season yes but i don't think yeah. they'll do it early enough to have a shot at the title to be honest long season but though it is a long season yeah i'm thinking like 2009 almost i Obviously, was just it's, thinking it's not, the same thing it's not as bad as that mclaren was no um, right no. now but by the end of the season, Hamilton was often top three on pace in McLaren. Well, Hamilton in the second half of the year scored the most points, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. It was him and Kimi, and they were both yeah. not in particularly brilliant cars. It was just the fact it was him and Kimi when yeah. Kimi was still incredible <laughs> yeah, yeah. as well. Back then, they were probably the best two on the grid back then. So, Well, they were the two most recent champions, weren't they? Yeah. Completely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, But, yeah, I mean, like we said, obviously, it's a 23-race season, though. We're only three races in. You know, George Russell has been pretty consistent early on. Hamilton, mm. with the exception of uh, Saudi Arabia as well, has done pretty well. Yeah. It is I just... Think it's it's cool that they're not out of it yet, which I think a lot of people potentially everyone's kind of just, just Everyone's just saying it's Charles Leclerc's world championship. But three yeah. races in, it's not over. Ferrari can fumble this and will likely fumble it somewhere. Yeah, they, it's been so long since Ferrari had a genuine shot at a championship. Well, not Especially... that long. Well, 2017-18, wasn't it? But they yeah. fumbled both of them. They haven't had like a serious proper go at it, arguably since 2012. Like, I would argue 2017-18 were proper yeah. goes at it. The the end results made yeah, it look yeah. a lot worse. But even so, they fumbled both of them. In 2012, they were fairly good. It was just the car really wasn't there. 2012, um, yeah, the car wasn't fast, but it was reliable. But, yeah. And, and Alonso like, was on another level. Yeah, he was. In terms of like team performance, they didn't make any errors where 2017 18 they kind of did. Yes. So it's been a while since Ferrari ran flawlessly, like the likes but, of the, the Braun days, of Braun, yeah. like Ross Braun, the 03 04 stuff. Yeah. But there's a, there's a good chance it's still Ferrari in the day. Like 12 months ago, they were the laughing stock. So it's very possible for them to just mess something up or bring an upgrade that slows the car down like they have done in 2017. Or do do something like reliability could be an issue. The clerk could start making mistakes as we've seen him in the past. It's a long way to go. It's not over yet, and it's cool that the likes of Russell, Perez, Hamilton, all probably would think they have a shout still. Um, yes, yeah. I love the fact you say Russell, like Perez, way. Hamilton, but not. Well, Verstappen goes. He goes without saying, doesn't he? He's obviously going to have a shout. But it's cool <laughs> that other like if we have those six drivers, including Science as well, up at the front, that'd be so amazing because like. It's all well and good. Last year we were treated to an absolute jewel. But if suddenly you have a bad race and you're finishing sixth, that's so much worse than having a bad race and finishing second. It could be 2010 vibes, couldn't it? Yeah. Sort of easily. four drivers going into it. But I think we'd very quickly see, wouldn't we, you know, sort of Leclerc, Hamilton, Verstappen, sort yeah. of that top three battle and then the other three kind of trying to pick up the pieces where they can. Yeah, yeah. Though I think Checo this year has been pretty good at red bull to be fair to him he, he's, like he's gone almost... under the radar hasn't he he's been closest yeah. qualifying at any driver pairing yeah and he's had a pole which we forget about in south which verstappen hasn't no yeah exactly yeah i think yeah, yeah this is the thing isn't it perez this year he's actually had some say on a formula one car for red and bull russell as well. as well like russell's been doing better than people give him credit for as well obviously he's very championship true. yeah a podium yeah. and out qualified hamilton at saudi as well so Basically well, the same as Perez, but it is yeah performance. Only Leclerc and Russell are the big sort of drivers that haven't had a bad race so far. Yeah. 
and that's why he's up in P2. And I mean, he could easily sort of hang on there for a few... A bit like... I always forgot last year how long Lando was P3 in the championship. Yeah, right up until Hungary. Like, after Britain, I think he was third still. Yeah, yeah. It was mad. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see, though, about that. It's, it, like we said, it's a very, very long season. Yeah. There's still 20 <laughs> races to go of the campaign. However, Jamie, as well, F2 and F3 return this weekend. Yeah, which is going to be fun. You've got a uh, action-packed time on the track. I've got a busy weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I kind so of I think, didn't realise. Uh, I'm going to have a look at my Google Calendar real quick and see when the race is happening. Let's have a look. So, yeah, we've got F2 very early on Saturday morning. Well, that is early. Sprint race at 10 to 8 yep. in the morning. <laughs> and this is UK time. And feature race at half at 25 past 9 the uh, on Sunday morning. So, yep. yeah, didn't realise it was quite that early. But I'll probably be getting up for them. Um, I'm sure you will be. I and hopefully will be. Remind me... I've completely blanked on who's winning the championship at the minute. I want to say Drogovic. No, Porsche oh, yeah, no, is that a It is Drogovic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But oh, no one's been that consistent yet. Lawson, I think, has been pretty good about a DNF in one of the Jeddah races. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Championship-wise, then at the moment, Drogovic is on 45, then it's Lawson 34, and Richard Vashaw on wow. 32 points yeah. there with Vips, Porsche, Daruvala, Armstrong, Boshung, Jay Hughes, and Owasa rang out To be fair, the I think if you're looking at the actual serious title contenders, you've probably got Lawson, Porcher, and Vips, I would say. I would not count out Drogovic. I don't, yeah, I think Drogovic, especially in the MP, he's very comfortable. Drogovic and MP, well. yeah, it's just such a weirdly brilliant combo, yeah. isn't it? It doesn't make yeah. any sense why it's that good, it just is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I it's. I don't think it's the, the best grid in the world this year. In no. Terms of quality. Um, we'll get onto a bit of silly season later, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if anyone does formulate an early season push, like a domination. It could be Drogovic, for all we know, but I think they'll be knocking on the doors of some some of the teams. But I don't think it'll be that much of a uh, a silly season this year, really. In F1, no, but F two no. is always exciting. So if you don't watch it, get up early. It's worth it. Exactly, exactly. And F three as well, of course. That's going to be exciting back this weekend as well. You know, we've kind of got a taster of that in Bahrain, but. Imola in a Formula 3 car is, I mean, it's a combo of not really the modern Formula 3 car, but a combo I've done and I've raced in a fair few times, and it is very, very good fun. But, you know, we'll wait and see about that as well, though. But it is going to be an action-packed race weekend from the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Let's get into other discussions then this week, Jamie. Now... If some of you weren't happy with us last week with our review of Sebastian Vettel's Australian Grand Prix. So if you weren't happy with that, maybe now is probably a time just to mute the podcast for a just couple of minutes. click onto the next timestamp. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, there's more and more talks, though, isn't there, Jamie, that could this well be Sebastian Vettel's last year in Formula 1? I think it's it's going to be his choice, which I think is always the best for an older driver. Like... I don't see Aston Martin replacing him particularly just because Aston don't think Martin there's... don't want to. They want to yeah. sign early for a new deal. Yeah, because like obviously their car performance isn't really there to be like attracting other drivers to want to replace Vettel. So I think it'll be his decision, but it is a, it is a shame to see him just messing around at the back in the ninth fastest car, or arguably well, it's tenth in the championship now, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, not scoring points at all. And maybe never scoring points this season. We'll have to wait and see. I think they'll probably scrape a couple. <laughs> oh, Aston Martin will, surely. Yeah. If Williams can get one in the first three races, Aston have got 20 more chances. So, yeah, I don't... I mean, I, we, we've said it before. We don't really rate Aston Martin's drive line that highly. Um, but, yeah, obviously, Stroll has got that seat for as long as he wants it until Lawrence pulls the plug. Um, and Sebastian... Yeah, I don't think he'll get forced out. But if, he, if he's just bored of driving around in 17th place then i don't see why he wouldn't leave problem is i don't i don't really think there's that many candidates to replace him with so yeah um, be a weird one i guess the yeah. obvious one is oscar piastri isn't it but yeah you kind of i just have this hope and belief in my eyes that oscar piastri can basically end up anywhere in a formula yeah. one car if he needed to uh but i mean i'm sure you know maybe you could see mercedes try and push fred vesti there something like that down oh, the line he's not good enough he no, isn't, no. you're absolutely right, but you never know still. Um, yeah, I think for Sebastian though, isn't it? You know, First year race of the year, obviously couldn't race. 
I just am wondering more and more. Because the thing is with Seb as well, like, don't get me wrong, like we said before, neither of us are big fans of him as a driver. However, I think we can both completely appreciate how valuable he is to the sport. Yeah, yeah, well, he's, what, statistical top five, isn't he? Yeah, so... fourth on the all-time win list still. Fourth? Yeah. Third. Third. Um, he's third, third still, no. isn't he? Yeah. Is he ahead of Prost? Yeah, he must be. Yes, yeah, 53 to 51 yeah, yeah. or 51 to 50, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely valuable for the sport. Obviously, been around for, like, well over a decade now. So, well, pretty much almost a decade and a half. Yeah, it is a decade and yeah, a half. Yeah, 15 years, so, yeah. Yeah, he's and he's obviously got a huge fan base, which is why we annoyed some of you last week. Um, yeah, I think him and Hamilton are kind of the last of the old guard, almost. So looks at Alonso. Oh yeah, sorry, Alonso. <laughs> <laughs> I forget about him. <laughs> but yeah, that's actually mad. Two thousand one is debut. Yeah. That's crazy. Alonso Fair spent play, half Fernando. his life in F one. Yeah. Oh, so, nearly. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a shame the day when it comes that he leaves uh, Sebastian, but. I don't think it's that far away. <laughs> no, no, exactly. But I think, again, isn't it? Like we said, you know, Seb is a huge fan of the sport. I think if he decided to leave racing, I don't think he would leave the sport entirely. You know, again, like we said, we're neither of us are massive Seb fans. But for me, it's just him rattling off every world champion. Amazing. Yeah. It was just incredible. Like most diehard F1. I mean, we couldn't do that. We, we could do pretty well. But not even we yeah. can sort of reach that I, I level. Could, I'm pretty sure I can get all of them, but just not in order. Like, no way. I'd miss out a couple, I can say. I yeah. can get all of them backwards to the early 80s, and then so you get back into the 70s, and mine gets it's a bit a foggy mess. here and yeah. there. Um, but that was... The fact he just did that on the spot like was kind of insane. Well. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, whether we'd sort of see him... I don't know what... The problem is with Seb as well. I don't know what he would do in Formula 1, because I can't see him sensibly getting into a position where, you know, I can never see him being like a race steward or anything like that. No. And I think that's just because he's so vocal about how much he loves Ferrari. Um, <laughs> could I could be see him an doing analyst. what, doing what Schumacher does. did when he first left. Which um, was? Uh, just sit on the pit wall, really, and be like advisor or something. Oh, sorry, you meant in his Ferrari career, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, whether where, where, where would he do that, though? Would he want to be an advisor down at Aston yeah, Martin? Could he go back to I... Red Bull to do that? No, I don't think he, he would. He could be at Red Bull. They still... I remember... I, it might be fake, but when... Um, there's the thing saying, like, when Seb got binned off from Ferrari in 2020, like, Red Bull got on the phone just to make sure he had something. Yes, like, Obviously, they yeah. weren't going to him a drive. Um, but, yeah, they, 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 there's a lot of love there for, for Seb still in the Red Bull, Red Bull garage. Yes. So I can yeah. see that, I think. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. What's Seb going to do if he's not racing? Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, like we said, he, he could go into, you know, like Pundit or something like that. You know, Rosberg style. Because I think yeah, as yeah. well, what a lot of people forget with Seb is he is just very funny. Yeah, he's a really cool, like, nice guy to be around as well. So I'm sure he'll find a way. He'll find a way in life to stay involved in F1 in some degree. Yes, yeah. And this leads me on, Jamie, to a bit of a bonus quiz question I've got for you today. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, of course, the other big discussion with Sebastian Vettel is, you know, he's, he's got a family. You know, he's, yeah. he's got three kids, everything like that. Can you name the two other current drivers with kids? K-Mag has a kid. Yep. I think Checo does. Perez? Spot on. I'm oh, kind of annoyed how it. quickly you got that. <laughs> <laughs> I only knew Magnussen did because his kid was at the paddock in one of the races this year. Yes, yep. Yeah, K-Mag and... has one daughter and Checo has two children. And Checo, when he won in Sakir, he was like thanking his family on the radio. So yeah, yes, there you yeah. go, smashed it. You have smashed it. Fair play, you <laughs> genuinely did better than I thought you would uh, yeah. with that one. <laughs> and of course, Nico Hulkenberg also has a child, but he doesn't have oh, a yeah. Formula One seat. And well, he he's done more races than Seb this year. He so. has done more races than Seb this year. And Max Verstappen has Daniel Kvyat's kid. Yeah, <laughs> stole his uh, drive first, and then moved on to other things. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That was so badly worded. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, going on though to our next point then, Jamie. We, we, you mentioned it briefly there. Fernando Alonso is talking about re-signing for like another two to three years. And I don't know how I feel about this. I love it. I think Fernando's great. <laughs> I think the only problem is that Alpine have the best young prospect in the whole of motorsport. 
and they and still want to sign Ocon for long term deals as yeah. well. Yeah, well, Ocon has a long term, doesn't he? It's twenty twenty five, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, it's annoying because obviously Alonso and Ocon are both doing pretty well this year. Ocon especially is under the radar, but I think he's seventh. Ocon today. always goes under the radar. He's yeah, generally but... stacked up pretty well against Alonso. Yeah, he has, to be fair. But Alonso is also 41 for, or something. Yeah, but so... every race is the best of his career still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would be incredibly harsh to replace either of them with Piastri. But it's a brutal sport at the end of the day. And Piastri Where can is he such... go? <laughs> yeah, it's such a shame, isn't it? They need... oh, We've gone over this so many times. They need a B team. They but desperately they need a B team. <laughs> Bring back Renault and have Alpine as a B team. Yeah. Come on. Even if you do it Red Bull 05 style, you basically just copy-paste your car. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I don't see much changing in terms of lineup, lineups at all next year across the whole grid. No. I do no. think Alonso will still be around at least next year in 2023. Yes, yeah. I don't I don't know how much longer than that, because surely he's going to lose it at some point. Yeah. But he's still so good. I, he's so good at the minute. It's amazing. I think yeah, this is the problem, isn't it? Like, where can... Because I then sort of, I'm trying to sort of rattle off other teams, you know. Unless Williams are sorted and they don't need Latifi, could yeah. we see Oscar Piastri go there? One I, thing I could see would be Ricardo to Aston if Seb That's goes. something we've discussed before, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Ricardo, a bit like Seb, you know, chases those money bags. Can yeah. you blame him? No, I cannot. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Piastri into McLaren with Lando. That'd yep, be quite good. That's a possibility down the line. Yeah, I just we desperately need Piastri on the grid, don't yeah. we? It I is... think out of any of the F two drivers on the current grid, it's still Piastri. Piastri, you, over he any would of them. smash. Like he yeah. could easily be on sort of. We're talking points. like out of this year's F two grid, the only ones I can see in F one, like next year, would be Lawson or Porsche. But I yes, don't see either yeah. of them. If I don't Richard Porsche, for sure. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't see. I don't think both of them will be. I think no, if one of them no. wins the title, I think they probably will be. Exactly. Can't you see Jay Andaruvalo with an F1 gig? Oh, no. <laughs> I, do, I think the only other one really is Awasa, isn't it? You know whether they whether he yeah. goes completely Sonoda yeah. style gets but pushed now way are, too hard. Kind of out of it. They won't be pushing as hard, will they? No, yeah, no. Driver. I suppose. I suppose. Perhaps they'll get rid of Gasly and have Awasa and Sonoda <laughs> as their lineup That'd next be amazing. year. I'm Shout not out to convinced. Actually, huge shout by the way. Yes, yeah, <laughs> big up Kamui Kobayashi. I made a short on him last week. Nice. Um, any other sort of, I mean, we're kind of already into it now, aren't we, Jamie? Yeah, any other season, driver transfer news? We yeah, we're going to make, of. at some point, like a 2023 predictions, but it's basically just going to be the same lineups. There is going to be a and lot I, of the same lineups. I really it? don't see much happening. Like, there's a few different scenarios, like I was saying. I think if Lawson or Pucher wins F2, one of them will get a seat. Yes. Either it lost to Alpha Tauri instead of Sonoda, or uh, Porcher will go to Alpha, and I can see Joe to Williams quite likely in that case. Could F1 You're want to keep a Chinese keep... driver? Yeah, F1 do want to keep a Chinese driver. This is the problem as well, isn't it? We need Andretti, Audi, and Porsche getting in or sooner. To turn up, yeah. <laughs> or to actually get on with it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, other than those two things I just mentioned, I don't really think much will change. Certainly not in the top teams. This no. Year. No, it's really, really difficult, isn't it? We just kind of want to see. There needs to be more seats, and yeah, but I think this is the problem, isn't it? As well, you know, the way F1 fitness has evolved, even over sort of the last fifteen years, has meant that drivers are able to stay at the top of their game for so much longer as well. Yeah, like one into their forties. What Raikkonen was forty-two. Raikkonen was Alonso forty-two. Was Alonso was going to be fifty-eight before he finally decides <laughs> to call it quits. He's going yeah, to yeah. try and break Fangio's Still record. Still looking for his third title. <laughs> Still looking for his third title in a retirement home. Um. Yeah, I think it's just there needs. I don't really know. It's so difficult, isn't it, Jamie? We kind of don't know what needs to happen, but a lot of things need to fall in place. Yeah. So F one can F one can be good, although it already <laughs> is. At More the seats and less pay drivers. Yes. So yeah. Stay. No. Uh, to be fair to Gran- to Joe Guanyu, I can completely respect he has done better at the start of this year than I thought he would. Yeah, you put it in 20th in the championship. I Yeah, I did. Um, Absolute clown. He still could, to be fair. And what, you think the two scoring two points? Let's not forget as well, Jamie, um, that he's also been given a bit of a life around the fact that no one knows how these cars handle. So he's kind of been helped, a bit like Leclerc in F2 2017. That's the fact he was able back, to yeah. dominate, because obviously everyone was on completely everyone equal was on a, Basically a rookie. 
so exactly. it was just the exactly. best one. <laughs> yes, and my god he was, wasn't he? That was a ridiculous Formula yeah. 2 campaign. Um we're right. A bit. Do we, 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 are, we are waffling a bit there, aren't we? <laughs> Thinking about Charles Leclerc in Formula 2. But are we going to get into predictions then, Jamie, for Imola? For Imola. Wow. Is we're this gonna, where I say Verstappen's going to win again? We're going to up the ante, though, this week. We're doing pole, sprint winner, Ooh. and top three race predictions. Nice. Two uh, points if you get a bang on. One point if you get them. The good get thing the about me going first order. is you can't copy me. Then so I'm just. Gonna I can copy ones. you, and if you say the right <laughs> thing, I probably will copy you. I would go pole position, Charles Leclerc. Okay. Um, sprint race winner. I'm, I, let me check the weather real quick. <laughs> I'm going try out on this. I want those points. I think I'm still ahead of you right now. So it's you good. are ten to eight. I want to say. Yeah. Weather Imola. Let's have a look. It's still all over the show, mate. Yeah, I know. It's pretty pretty poor. Let's have a look. We've got so Friday's qualifying this week, obviously. Yeah. Um which actually says ninety percent chance of rain. Yeah. So I may change that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bail. Verstappen pole. Okay. Verstappen sprint race win. Okay. And I'll go, oh, I don't want to predict Leclerc to win. That's so boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll go Verstappen. So you're going Verstappen to get loads of points all this three. week? All three. Yeah, yeah. He's Verstappen on the comeback all three. Trail. Okay. Verstappen win, Leclerc second, Sainz third. Okay. In the race. Right, I am going to take this the other way then. Because oh, I no. think you're forgetting <laughs> just how much better that Ferrari is in the high downfall spits. Nah. So I'm Maybe saying... Red Bull. Red Bull I'm going to say Leclerc pole. Leclerc sprint race. Who do I go for the race on Sunday? I am going to say... Lewis Hamilton. I really want to, but <laughs> no. I'm going to say... Science. Winner, Ooh, I'm gonna go. Win. I'm gonna go gambles here. Science, Verstappen, Leclerc. I wanted to say, you know, maybe we'll see some fireworks stream Verstappen and Leclerc this weekend. It's a bit of risk, though, isn't it? When you're already losing. Exactly. So exactly. You're so, just manifesting for yourself a good race, saying that Science is gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes, yeah, Sainz, Leclerc, Verstappen, because then even if I even if they don't come together, I might get a couple of points yeah, for yeah. getting them in the somewhat the right nice. order. Well, let um, us know what you think in the comments. Yes, yeah, let us know down in the comments below uh, your predictions as well. There are five predictions this week, Jamie. Ten points. Yeah, up for grabs if you get these bang on. Anything else to add though before we round this one out? We've kind of rattled through everything quite quickly this week. There isn't a yeah, yeah. huge amount to talk about, is there? I don't think so. Really, it's just a bit of a like preview week, obviously, and not much has really happened in the past seven days in the world of F1. So, no doubt something will happen between us now and this going live. And yeah, this coming live. Yeah. I'm sure probably something's already been announced. So I double check yeah, Twitter yeah. quickly before we it. finish off. <laughs> I don't think so. All right, um, we're all good. Well, there you go. Let us know what you uh, what you're predicting for the race. Um, next week's podcast will be coming live from Imola. I should be home. I'm coming home early Monday morning, so I will be back for next nice. week's podcast. And you'll still be drenched from the uh, Italian rain. I still will be drenched from the Italian rain, because apparently that's it's better, different. It's better than Manchester rain, so there you go. Yes, very, very true. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go, though. Don't think there's anything else to add, though, this week. Thank you all so much for listening slash watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed. I never even plugged the Spotify at the start of this, oh. you know, if you watch this on YouTube, go check us out on Spotify as well. And yeah, we'll be back next week then, reacting to how I predicted Carlos Sainz's first ever Formula One <laughs> race win. It's going to be good. <laughs>